Hi guys and welcome back to the channel, The Journey to Justice. Crime talk in a minivan. Tomorrow is another big day uh, to hear more filings of motions for discovery from no other than Mark Means, Lori Vallow Daybell, his client. And so that'll be tomorrow on the 17th of February, 2021. I'm not sure what time, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., 10.30, around that time. Um, wherever you are, um, you know, it's in Idaho. So uh, there's um, other YouTubers will be uh, streaming it live for you guys so you can go check those channels out and you know who they are um so i don't know what's up with this lawyer but um maybe he should just uh give it up or something because i mean his senseless not really senseless but his motions upon motions back-to-back -back motions, and motion the motions. You know what I mean? Um, motion, hearing, discovery. Uh, we know that Mark Means is at it again. And it's all about discovery. Discovery. And the state is keeping it from him. How about that? The state is keeping his discovery from him. Hmm. But Chad's lawyer prior seems to be okay with getting his. So um, I don't know. Maybe Mark means needs uh, some help. He needs... Uh, an assistant that can keep a diary for him and make sure that all the discovery is coming in and it is uh, documented and catalogued and kept in order and to give him reminders of the next court dates and what time they're going to be and things like that. Because I think he is a little over his head. Um, yeah. Because it's exhausting for him. I think it's a one-man band. Uh, he doesn't have an assistant. Well, this is a very, very important case. A case that doesn't come along too often in one's career as a lawyer. This will make you or break you. Now, he needs to get help, and he needs to get it now. If he wants to keep on the case, because later down the road, um, he won't be her lawyer any longer. Because if the state was to file, whenever this may happen, it might take years. Yeah, it might take years. But... If the state does file the big M charges on them both, especially Lori, he cannot be her lawyer. Especially if they file for the uh, DP. And so, meanwhile, he's got the case. And he is Lori Vallow Daybell's lawyer. He should be making the most of this, but he obviously is looking a little, looking like a twat. Uh, like somebody that's just out of law school. Or somebody's in training or something. And he, he's running to daddy all the time. Running to daddy. And daddy is the judge. Uh, the judge uh, is probably not again. My God. You know, 
I have to babysit this man, this lawyer. Yes, you are going to have to guide him in the right direction. Now, he's filing the motion again for the cell phone. You know the phone that he says Lori should have in jail so they can communicate? Yeah. Well, you can't have one. It's already been discussed. It's a no, no, no way, Jose. You cannot have a telephone. You cannot have your own personal phone. Other people, other cases that are going through the court system now, anywhere in the United States of America, find a way and are doing just fine. Well, if you have such a hard time getting to the jailhouse in Madison where she is being held, maybe you should just move closer so you can be closer to her and you'll be able to communicate as often as you want instead of going three to four hour drive away. Now, my question is, really on that, is why... Did they choose lawyers that live so far away from them? Knowing it could be very difficult for them to see each other face to face. Especially if they end up in jail, which they have. Now there's a reason why they chose these lawyers. Because it seems like. Chad and Lori are one step ahead of everybody because this was a planned thing. It's planned all along. But you know, some of it wasn't really planned that well. But obviously, in my opinion that is, they're either in it somewhere along the line in their little group they were friends and of course they've looked up their background and kind of saw you know their backgrounds and what type of people they are and can they be easily easily persuaded convinced and hypnotized to do whatever they want because we know these two are big fat liars Lori and Chad and the rest of them now we know that um, Alex Cox wife and some of this Lori's sister and whoever else Melanie um, they had that other guy, whatever his name was. Um, and look at him. Look what he's done. Uh, what reputation has he? He's a liar too. And he's the one that recorded Rob Wood's um, interview with Summer and sent it along to Mark Means. Uh, a lawyer not to be trusted and my question is why would Rob Wood had trusted them why didn't he think that this might be used against him in any form shape whatever do you know what I mean um, why didn't uh, Rob Wood think ahead because well, he won't do it again so fast. He won't do it again. And you can't trust Summer, Alex Cox's wife. There's something going on there that she may have made some kind of deal um, uh, to be a witness in what she may know. She may not know a lot, but we don't know that what information she has given on what she knows. So, but don't trust none of them because they're all a bunch of liars in my opinion 
uh, they don't know nothing. And then when you heard Summer going, oh, mm, she sounded just like Laurie, like, oh, like you're so naive. Oh, there's a reason why she was doing the O and the R and well, because she didn't want to say too much. She wanted Woods to keep talking and then she'd, you know, pipe up once in a while. That is really not having a, a conversation with somebody, is it? And he was set up, if you ask me. So, set up. So, none of them need to be trusted. You really have to watch what you say and do. And don't give them any more information than they really need to know. Now, I don't even think that Rob Woods should have had any conversation with them about uh, going for the DP, maybe, uh, or anything like that. Oh, because he thought that was going to call their bluff or something? No, no. Don't trust none of them. They're all shady. Shady. Slim shady. But anyway, and of course, Mark Means wants to go over and over and over the motions, upon motions, upon new motions, about about the same old thing. He's just going around in a circle. And the video chats in the jail. Mark Means does not understand the jail phone system. Obviously, he doesn't. Uh, because, you know, he's a family court, um, a family lawyer, and he's probably hardly ever visited anybody in jail. Because, uh, you know, if you're a divorce lawyer, family lawyer, anything like that, most people that he represents aren't in jail. <laughs> because they haven't done anything that warrants them to be in jail. So it looks like he's never really had too many clients that's been in jail for maybe a very, very long time. He doesn't know how the system works. So he doesn't understand, or maybe he needs to get a hearing aid of some sorts. Uh, because when you call the county jail, it gives you a recording saying all calls will be recorded. And if you don't want to be recorded, you just hang up. Or if you don't want to be recorded and if you are being recorded, you can't say too much. So um, another lawyer says, if you are a lawyer wanting to speak to your client, you have to call the county jail up and give them this number. And then when this number comes up, the recording automatically shuts off and you won't be recorded. But you know, Mark Means must uh, do this himself. Uh, not everybody's going to keep doing his work for him. Uh, um, that's, I mean, why doesn't he know this? I mean, we kind of, are watching court TV and all those um, trials and everything, and even we know it, and we've probably never been in jail before in our life. Well, anyway, this discovery uh, that Mark Means is motioning, filing about, he says that he didn't get it, but he also got it back in April or May in 2020. And prior has got all this information and he don't seem to have a problem getting what he wants. So why is Mark Means having a problem getting all the information to discovery? Because he's lost it. He's forgotten about it. He don't know where it is. He's trying to uh, delay, delay, delay. Um, and... You know, prior, Chad's lawyer has had no problem with his visits, with his client, and no problems with communicating uh, with his client in jail. So, 
and you know, priors not filing all these motions after motions about video, phone calls, and all that and the other. But Mark Mark Means is not prior, is he? Even though their office, their offices, are in the same building together, and they know each other very well. So. So, well, I guess, you know, they're not going to communicate with each other because they have their clients. And one is, even though they are joint in this case, they are representing their clients in different ways. Um, so... Prior is going to let Mark Means, uh, you know, mess up, I guess, you know. But we don't really know how much they communicate. You know what I mean? We are not going to know. Uh, they may act like they're not communicating with each other. They're not supposed to, but we don't know because these are some... There's a lot of dirty players in this game. You know, it's not even a game. It's a very serious, serious case of two children and two adults that were innocent and are no longer on this earth to speak for themselves. Now, what do you think the judge is going to do or say tomorrow to Mark Means? Will he give him a telling off? Will he give him more time? What do you think he's going to say? He's probably had it up to here. He's probably going to tell him to get an assistant or something. Uh, uh, maybe get a diary or something. Because he doesn't even know he had a court date tomorrow. He can't even keep up with it. But anyway, he's just way over his head, I think. You know, if you can't handle it, get help. If you can't handle it, step back. This is the biggest case that you will ever get in your lifetime. Yep, you don't know how big this case is. Well, maybe he does. We don't know. And... If you haven't got discovery or any kind of thing that you need, you know, paperwork, discovery, you are supposed to get a hold of the court and whoever is involved in the case and ask for it to be sent over to you. That is step one. But no, Mark Means is running to the judge and filing motion on top of motions and more. Like I said, this is the biggest case that he probably have in his lifetime, in his career. This is a worldly known case. And people are watching it very closely. Lots of lawyers. I mean, people that are going to be lawyers will be watching this to see how these lawyers perform and you know Mark Means could make a he could make a name for himself uh, but so far you know he's done some okay things you know you are the client's lawyer you should be doing these things but sadly he's not going to make a name for the right reasons and don't forget, guys, that the hearing is tomorrow um, on Zoom. Like I said, other YouTubers will be live streaming. And so you can go over there and watch it live. So, guys, that's just a little update on the Lori Chad 
Daybell Vallow case. And, you know, Emma, Chad's daughter, has spoken uh, to a representative on um, Court TV uh, for the first time. that, And she wants to know about her mother's autopsy and... Well, she, she wants them first before they are released, when they're going to be released. And she wants to know. But she'll know in good time when it's the right time when they decide she will get the results. Um, so, and like she said, there's stuff that's being out there about what happened uh, the night her mother died and all the morning, actually, is... Uh, wrong so she's kind of but she's not going to say nothing right now until she sees her mother's autopsy and then she may speak again on uh, the wrongs in the right the information that came out because you know gossip and it's not factual um it's just gossip i guess um so We'll have to see if she will talk again. Um, so, guys, that's it for now. Crime in a minivan. And don't forget to like and sub to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.